Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with Easy Sweet and Sour Pork Belly. That's right, I think you're ready for this belly, which not everybody agrees with, right? Some people think this is too delicious, or as they might put it, bootylicious for you, babe. But not me. Not only do I think you can handle it, I know you can handle it. And by the way, we're gonna achieve all this amazing taste and texture with by far the simplest pork belly method ever. In fact, it barely qualifies as a method. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. And what we'll need here is about a one and a half to two pound piece of pork belly, which looks like this. And that's the leaner side. And we'll go ahead and flip this over to show you the fatty side. And what we need to see here is soft white fat, which means the skin has been removed. And that's what you're gonna need to use for this recipe. And then the only thing we need to do to this is take a sharp knife and cut some slashes into the fat side about an eighth of an inch deep, about a half inch apart or so. And then we'll turn this and repeat that at about a 45 degree angle. And that's gonna allow our seasoning mix to get down into that belly a little better. And that's it, once that's been scored, as we call it in the business, we will transfer that into a small baking dish or roasting pan. At which point we can move on to make our seasoning blend which is nothing more than kosher salt, some brown sugar, some cayenne, and some freshly ground black pepper. And we'll take a spoon and give this a mix before applying it very generously to our pork belly. So we will go ahead and sprinkle that all over and sort of press it in before turning that over and doing the same thing to the fat side. And of course, if you wanna switch up these seasonings, go ahead. If you like a certain spice, especially with pork, it will work here. But generally, I like to keep this rub fairly neutral. And maybe by doing that, we have a little more versatility with the sauce or the glaze. And no, we haven't forgotten about seasoning the sides. Okay, what we'll do once all that's been sprinkled over and pressed on is pick it up and give those sides the old, old, old tapa tapa in the dish. And that's it, we'll make sure we finish with the fat side up so that this basically self bastes in the oven. Oh yeah, why baste when the fat will do it for you? And then before this goes in the oven, We'll go ahead and cover it with foil. And I also like to transfer it onto a sheet pan. And no, I'm not wrapping this super, super tight, like airtight, but right, I'm just wrapping this so it's basically covered. And believe it or not, that's it. We can go ahead and transfer that into the center of a 250 degree oven, where we're gonna cook it low and slow for three and a half hours, or until it's nice and tender, as tested with the tip of a knife. And if everything goes according to plan, it should look like this. But we almost never test done this just by looking. So let's go ahead and grab a small knife to make sure, which should slide into this very easily, which mine did. But if yours doesn't, don't worry. Just wrap it back up and pop it back in. Right, that is just you cooking. And then what we'll do next is let this cool down to room temp before covering it up and popping it in the fridge to chill thoroughly. Okay, preferably overnight. And while you can cut this and work with it right away, everything is so much better and easier if it's cold. So I did chill mine overnight at which point we'll pull it out, uncover it, and transfer the meat onto a cutting board. But before we slice that up, let's talk a little bit about what's left in our baking dish, which would be this gorgeous white fat on the top, which we're gonna use to start our sweet and sour sauce with, as well as of course use to saute many different delicious things. And then we also have what we call the belly jelly, which as you'll see, we're gonna use a little bit later. And we can just separate these two components while they're cold like this, but it's probably easier if we heat this in a measuring cup and then simply skim the fat off the top, which will leave that beautiful, gorgeous liquid underneath. But anyway, the point is don't throw it away. And then as far as slicing the pork goes, I'm gonna go ahead and cut this right in half, dividing this between the thin end and the thick end. And if you're lucky, you'll get a piece of belly that's exactly the same size all the way across. But generally that's not the case, which is fine, it really doesn't matter. Because what we'll do is cut those halves in half to make four pieces, too thick and too thin, and then we'll simply cut these pieces into about half inch slices. So I ended up getting four nice slices out of the thick end. And yes, if you have to trim a little bit of a jagged piece off that end slice and eat it cold, then do what you gotta do. But be careful, this is really delicious cold and you might end up sampling a little too much. But anyway, we'll go ahead and slice that up. And I think what I'll do is use these bigger pieces for the sweet and sour over rice. And then maybe I'll save these slices from the thinner section to enjoy with some noodles in a different dish. So we got options, right? Don't forget if you can, always have options. And that's it, once our cooked pork belly is prepped, we can move on to make this very simple sweet and sour sauce, which starts by heating some of that rendered pork fat I showed you earlier over medium high heat. 
into which we will add some finely grated ginger and some crushed garlic. And we'll go ahead and sizzle those in that hot fat for about 30 seconds or until they smell like heaven, at which point we'll go ahead and pour in some pineapple juice, which will stop our aromatics from sizzling any longer. And then we'll also want a little bit of brown sugar as well as some tomato ketchup or catsup as nobody calls it anymore. And then we'll also want to do a splash of rice vinegar as well as a little touch of soy sauce. And then last but not least, one technically optional ingredient, a couple spoons of sambal chili paste, which I'm definitely gonna add because I like a little bit of heat. But of course, that's gonna be up to you. I mean, you are after all the destiny's child of how spicy or mild. And by the way, the sweetness of the sauce will definitely cancel out some of that heat. So don't worry if you're generally not into spicy things since our other ingredients are gonna mellow that out. And then what we'll do once that's been stirred together and it comes back to the simmer is that we'll cook that for like three or four or five minutes or until it reduces by roughly half, give or take, and thicken slightly. But we do not need to reduce this till it's really thick at this point, since that's gonna happen in the pan with our pork belly. So once mine looks like this, I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the heat and we'll just reserve that until needed. And that's it, we are now ready to move into final production, which means placing some of our sliced pork belly into a dry nonstick pan, which we will place over medium high heat. And all we're doing here is cooking this for about two minutes per side, just to get a little bit of color on the surface. All right, don't forget this has already been cooked through and it's already nice and tender. And if we cook it too much at this point, that beautiful delicious fat's gonna start rendering out, which is not really a good thing. Okay, I want that fat to stay in the belly. So all we're doing here is browning that surface a little bit, at which point if we want, we can add some of that melted belly jelly that we reserved from the dish, which yes, looks terrible because I didn't strain it, but that's fine, it doesn't matter. As you'll see, this is gonna look fantastic when we serve it. And then besides a couple tablespoons of that, we can also transfer in our sweet and sour sauce. Okay, at least a couple tablespoons, but the exact amount will be up to you. And then all we need to do is cook this for a couple minutes until that sauce reduces down as far as we want, which for me is pretty much all the way down to a glaze. And that is pretty much it. This really could not be any simpler. All right, so as soon as our pork is browned and heated through and our sauce slash glaze is looking exactly how we want it, we'll go ahead and pull that off the heat and serve that on top of some of my famous yellow rice, which I really should give you the recipe for. Actually, you know what, I'll just do it now. All that is is basmati rice cooked with a teaspoon of turmeric. And then when we fluff it up, we'll go ahead and add a handful of green onions. And that makes for an absolutely perfect base for our sweet and sour pork belly. And that's it, we'll finish up by spooning whatever sauce was left in the pan. And by the way, if you reduced it too far, like I sorta of did, just go ahead and stir in a couple teaspoons of water to loosen it up at which point it should become very spoonable again. And for a final touch, I added some thinly sliced baby green onions. And that's it, my easy, very easy, sweet and sour pork belly was ready to enjoy. And man, did I enjoy this. All right, that my friends, I consider a perfect food. Just so rich and meaty and unctuous. And that's just the pork belly. But when you combine all that stuff I just said with that sweet and sour and spicy and salty glaze, it just creates something that really is otherworldly which is the phrase I use when I can't think of how to describe how delicious something is. So yes, I'm going with otherworldly. And while I do think this sweet and sour sauce is absolutely perfect with this, there are so many other things you could finish this dish with. All right, something like a teriyaki sauce or a sweet hot mustard sauce or a barbecue sauce or pretty much any sticky delicious wing sauce we've ever posted. All right, any of those would be absolutely spectacular with pork belly. All right, the only thing to keep in mind is because pork belly is very rich and unctuous and fatty, we really do want to sauce it with something that has some acidity to it. Okay, so as you're developing your own takes on this, keep that in mind. You're definitely going to want some kind of vinegar or citrus juice involved. But no matter how you sauce your pork belly, or whether you serve it on rice or noodles, or in lettuce cups, oh yes, this makes amazing lettuce cups. But no matter how you serve it, I really do hope you give this simple and easy pork belly technique a try soon. So please follow the links below for the ingredient amounts, a printable written recipe, and much more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.